Hey, hope you had a great couple weeks. So getting to work here on the wheel well covers. When I was building the frame, when I was designing it, I didn't know exactly what wheel I would use if I was gonna use a fat tire. So the inside part of the frame here, uh, the wheel well frame is moved out from parallel with the main frame. So I'm creating this fold in the ACM panel to cover the gap that I created. If I had to do it all over again, I would have designed it, obviously not with this gap, in the, but it's no problem to cover it up with the fold and the ACM panel works well. Just have to do a lot of filing on the welds here to make sure it's flush so that panel is nice and watertight. Now what I found was when I put in the paneling here that I had put joints in with the router, when I clamped it in and as soon as it stuck to the 3M tape, the tape's so strong that when I clamped it in another area, it almost started to crack the, the router joints a little bit. So you just gotta be careful there. Turn it okay. When I welded the rear stabilizer receivers in, it distorted them a little bit. So I'm using this rasp that I bought to just file out the interior and then some WD-40 dry spray in the receiving tube and then on the leg. And after a few minutes doing that, it's working nice again. Just cleaning up the panel here with the flush cut router. I must say, I love a good flush cut. So we got mom and dad here to do the heavy lifting. They're capable. Next is sizing up the window location. Basically ended up centering it under the peak of the roof line. And I'm welding in the support frames for the window cutout. I gotta say, if you're intimidated by the thought of learning how to TIG weld, don't be. Just get started. Uh, make sure you're safe, but it's really rewarding, very relaxing. Okay, I'm gonna use a permanent black marker here on the inside to trace out the frame against this panel. I don't wanna use the heat gun any more than I need to to take this old sticker sign off. So this should cut down on that. Solid. Yeah, that's awesome. Solid. So I could be like on a hill yeah. and just like a porch on a hill. Oh, really? I'm gonna like go on a mountain. I'm just gonna go off the side of the mountain. I'm just gonna put this like a porch and I'm gonna sleep and like look out over the mountain. Wow. <laughs> yeah. The dreams are just all these possibilities. I'm so excited. Yeah, I get excited when I talk about this. This build, this journey. Who knows what adventures await. So a bit of a disappointment here. I thought I could use the Coroplast 10 mil as a floor, but as you can see, I'm vexed. It's not gonna work, it's too flexible. I think I might use a composite construction process, but anyways, I'm gonna go on and shape out the pieces for the insulation in between the framing. I have to come back to the floor. I want the floor to be nice and rigid. I don't want it to be too flexible. Not much to say about this part other than I thought I would enjoy it, kind of like Lego, but actually I found it kind of boring and tedious to cut all these custom shapes out. I'm looking for a nice press fit. That's why I'm going back and shaving off pieces. I'm cutting it a little large, a little outside of my trace lines because I'm thinking I'm not gonna glue them directly to the ACM panel. We'll see. To cut the insulation, I'm using a knife blade on a jigsaw. Almost zero dust, really a good way to go. Highly recommend that method. Okay, so time to weld the top frame cross members. I was holding off doing this originally because I thought I needed space to get the floor in, but the floor, even if I had these members welded in, they, they would have slid through the top. Those insulation pieces Covering the wheel wells are just temporary. They see they're kind of jagged. I'm gonna make them really a nice, perfect fit finish because I think I'm just gonna use some kind of hull liner fabric on the interior glued right to the insulation. Try to avoid weight. I don't think I'm gonna put any eighth ply or quarter inch plywood on there at all. Can you see it? That awful protrusion there? Yeah, it's not straight. I don't know what I did. I wasn't paying attention. and. It's like this kink, this upward kink in the, in the roof line there. So 
Yeah, eventually I, I cut that and I and I fixed it. It was driving me nuts. Here are just some gusset joints in the back corners to try to add some some rigidity. But I have to say it's quite quite strong even without the paneling on it yet. Using the angle finder here, that front angle between the cross member and the lower frame assembly, um, because I'm not splitting the angle in half, it's not going to be uh, flush on one end, it's going to be uh, more material, so it's going to enter the cabin space a little bit, but it'll still be, still be within the one inch thickness of the insulation, it shouldn't be a problem. And I'm putting these here mostly so if I'm riding my bike and I turn too far, I don't want it to puncture or create a dent in the ACM, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit right where a cross member is, that's the thinking here. I guess it's not called a cross member, whatever you want to call that aluminum bar I'm putting there. Just an additional support. And I'm just using this as a guide to line it up so that when I put my panel on, it'll be nice and flush. I'm pretty nervous actually about welding this bottom weld here because I have the ACM already taped. And the, the 3M tape is good up to, I think, 200 degrees, but the, the welding obviously gets it real hot real fast. So I'm just putting a couple of stiff tacks on the bottom and that's it. I'm not gonna weld it any more than that. I clamped up the top lip there of the frame. Just wanna make sure if that 3M tape heated up that it was secure while it cooled back off. I'm not sure if it would help, but why not? All right, Max and Fair arrived. I got the smoke lid 4401K, I think is the model. Actually feels a bit heavier than I expected it to. But not bad. I think I'm gonna wire in a switch so I get a reverse and make it a ceiling fan as well as an exhaust fan. I'll have to build a frame inside to mount the trim cover on the inside, but it should be, should be pretty good. I'm gonna put this, try to prevent any corrosion between the aluminum and the steel of the torsion axle. Back to peeling off the old sign. Who knows what this was? Sign for a funeral house or something. Tightening all the bolts and nuts on the torsion axles one last time before I start to put the side panels on. Can't reach them anymore. And then just after a brief cleanup, get the parents in here, help me to twist this sucker onto its side. And next we're gonna put on that first side panel. Exciting stuff. Well, I've got it on its side here before I put the side panel on, I thought I'd show you the drop down leg design a little more closely. So these are the 3D printed tube clamps that Justin printed for me locally in my town here, Peterborough, Ontario, Canada. And I'm just using this C2 quick release lever. Release that. And then it just slides down to whatever your height wants to be. Latch it down. It's not going anywhere. Real strong, real sturdy. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Again, thanks Justin. That clamp is awesome, works perfect. And I also got Justin to print out these feet for me. Problem is my SketchUp file was a little off with dimensions, so I gotta thicken that insert there. But basically it's just gonna go in like there. This is a TPU filament, it's pretty flexible for the gravel and the rocks and the roots and wherever this journey might take me. Just slide it on in, slide it on out. It's kind of fun. And clamp down. The one concern I have is because I didn't use any bearings is that eventually rocks, dust, uh, dirt, debris might get in there and, and cause this to become seized. But I've used this WD-40 dry lube spray on it. That seems to be pretty good. And here's a closer look of the torsion axles by Flexi Ride. I had Branson machine take these spindles down. I think they were about an inch and a quarter. 
I took them down to 20 millimeters to fit a bicycle through axle standard. Using stainless steel, locking washers and locking bolts, sorry, locking nuts. On the bottom here, I've just left the old sign on there. Triple crown, baby. <laughs> Get you some triple crown. No one's going to see it though. So the actual sticker on the ACP will probably prevent any of that galvanic corrosion as it is. But I had the spray, so I sprayed it on there. I'll clean up the excess here in a moment. Okay, fun part, putting on the first side panel. I've got my 3M tape. It's the 5952 variety, three quarter inch wide, eighth of an inch thick. I've got to put some pressure on it. So I'm using the roller to, uh, first of all, make sure there's no air bubbles when I lay it down and then to give it some nice even pressure afterwards. Um, they recommend you do that as part of the process. Ah, uh, the flush cut. Nothing like a flush cut. Feels like a brand new haircut. A little bit of cleanup here. Comes up nice with the broom. And I uh, flipped it over, I did the second panel, save you all that time of watching. Mom and dad are slowly moving from he's crazy to this is interesting. I think it's gonna look badass. Cyber drop, I'm calling it the cyber drop. off so next video I should have the window install for you and the door install the door just arrived so have a great week have a great couple weeks I'm taking a vacation week next week so it might be two or three weeks until the next video now I'll never tell you to like or subscribe but you can if you want